If you are new to the channel, welcome. If you're not new, welcome back. Now that we have a Laravel project set up so that we can have something to work with, I want to go ahead and start installing NeoVim so we can see how all of this is going to start to work together. Let's go ahead into the NeoVim documentation. And what I want to do is I want to head over to this install now tab right here. Now, something that I am really asking you to keep in mind is that this whole world of NeoVim really encourages you to have your own identity. Everything should really be unique to you and your needs because it is something that you're going to be working in. And so NeoVim offers a lot of flexibility for a lot of different things. One of those things include how to set this up. So there's no one way to do it. You can download it, you can use the package, you can source it, and that's what we're going to be using. But if you scroll down, you can see there's a bunch of different ways to sort of do all of this. But I'm going to show you the way I did it because I really wanted to see what it looks like. I want to see, I want to understand as much as I possibly can about it. So I'm going to go ahead and build it from source. Now this documentation, it's really good. It's really robust. And by extension, that means that it also can be a bit confusing. So we're going to go through it step by step. So one of the things it's saying is if a package is not provided, you can build it from source, then just see the build guide to do that. But the first thing that we want to do is handle the prerequisites. So if you come down here, it's a quick start. And this is the guide that we're essentially going to be using where we can get clone it, CD into it. We'll use CMake to build it and then we'll install it. But let's go ahead, grab the build requirements because I'm using Ubuntu. This is the command that I'm going to use. And we're basically just going to be installing Ninja Build, Get Text, CMake, Unzip, Curl, Build Essential, which is some things we have anyway, but it doesn't hurt to just go ahead and grab all of this to make sure that we have it. One more thing is I had to put a little key capture thing here because as you'll see when we get through this, I'm going to be using a lot less of the mouse and a lot more of the keyboard. And I want you to see what buttons it is that I'm pressing. That's something that I'm going to be taking advantage of for you guys as well. So go ahead, copy that. We'll go ahead into the terminal, paste it in, and then I'm also going to add a Y. Okay, so that's pretty much all that is. Now we have our prerequisites installed and we're good to go. Go back up to the top of this page and we'll go ahead and clone the NeoVim repo. In here, where are we? Well, we're just in the main home folder for our user. I'm gonna go ahead, paste this in. This is fine, you can do it right here. That is done. It took a while, but I think that's just because I'm also recording at the same time. But if we LS, we have a new folder here called NeoVim. So we can CD into NeoVim. And then I'm going to do LSA so that we can see everything in here. And there's quite a bit of stuff in here. So let's go back to the docs so that we can see what the next command is. We've already changed the directory. So now we can go ahead and run this build command. Drop that in there, press enter, let it do its thing. Okay, good. So that wasn't too bad, but if we scroll up a bit, you can see that a lot of things were happening in here where it's really just building it. So it's putting everything where it's supposed to go in terms of what we're going to need. Tree sitter is one of those things. We are going to be using that, but it is something that is built into NeoVim and other things. I know some of this might not make sense. I just find it really interesting to kind of go through and see what exactly is happening. So for now, I'll just clear that out. Now, something to note is that the version that it will be installing will just be the most recent version. And just like most other different packages, you'll have a nightly release where it's just sort of testing stuff. So it's not really ready to be used full time. And a lot of people like that. I don't particularly 
want to do something like that. I just want to have a stable version so that I can use it. So we'll do git checkout stable and then we'll come back here. Okay, so the version we'll be using will be 0 0.10. And either way, that's put us at the most stable version. So now we can run this make install and this will pull everything together and set everything for us. You can do some of these too. Some of these will allow you to do this in sort of like a containerized folder so that if you need to uninstall, then you can just uninstall it. But I just want it system wide. This is the command that I'll be running. And let it do its thing. Hey, congratulations. We have successfully installed NeoVim and I think we can do this. Let's see. NeoVim version 0 0.10. Good. That's all done. Now, what I want to do is I want to CD back and how we're going to do this is in here, there's a config folder, a .config folder, and I want to CD into that. Actually, before that, what I want to do is I want to, what was our last command? Make install. We can also do make clean. What that'll do is it'll get rid of any CD Neo M. What that'll do is it'll clean up any of the unnecessary files and you want to sudo that command and it cleaned 598 of those files. So we're good to go there. Let's go back. We'll go into the config folder and all we have in there is our composer. So I want to make a new folder and I want to call it, what do I want to call it? I want to call it NVIM. And we'll cd into nvim. This will be where we put our entire NeoVim configuration. So anything happening directly related to NeoVim will go into this folder. What's the first thing that we want to do? Well, now that we have NeoVim installed, we can use nvim as a command. If we go ahead and type in nvim, this is bringing us into our nvim setup. And there's a lot of things going on in here. You can use the help command to look for things. You can use check health to basically make sure that all of the packages that you're using and that you'll need are all working together. That's what check health is. And colon Q, that's how you exit. There's a lot of stuff going on in here. Now, I don't want to get too deep into the inner workings of NeoVim because I don't really have the full vocabulary to really explain too much of NeoVim. Just think of it like this. Replace the word VS Code for NeoVim. What do you do in VS Code? Well, you can do anything you want. You can install packages to kind of help you with your code editing, or you could write notes. You can use it to do a lot of things. NeoVim is just like that, but NeoVim is a much more customized experience for things that you want. Essentially, that's what's happening in here. And if you've seen Vim, then this page looks somewhat familiar to you. If you haven't seen Vim, then this page is going to be a complete mystery, right? So to get out of this for right now, what I want to do is I want to press Q. And let's say we did that with Vim. This is what Vim looks like, almost identical. That's just to kind of give you an idea of how it's going to work, but it's not going to look anything like this. We're going to do some really cool stuff with NeoVim. The first thing I want to do is I want to create a file. So I'll use NVim to open that. And the file is going to be called init.lua. And this is going to be the entry point into everything that we do with NeoVim. And one of the cool things about NeoVim, and I'm assuming it's in Vim as well, is that if you press colon and capital T U T O R for tutor and press enter, this is actually a pretty cool little tutorial built into the software itself that will allow you to just sort of take a tutor, <laughs> you know, it shows you how to do stuff and it does these little sample lessons and it gives you a little test so that you can basically move on down and follow through. And this is something that I use a lot in order to help with learning the shortcuts and the keys to do stuff. So as you can see on the keyboard, I'm pressing K and the cursor is moving up. J is moving down. L is moving to the right and then H is moving to the left. And really, once you get that, then things will come a lot easier to you. So to get out of that, it'll be colon Q 
and we'll leave that at that. So let's get back into this NVIM init Lua file that we were working on. Now, some of the things I like to do are just basic configurations. So the learning curve from VS Code to this and looking at this the way it is could be a little daunting. And so I have some variables that I use to start making it a little bit more user friendly for me. So one of the things I like to do is instead of having these curly brackets here, I like to have numbers. So here I will enter, I'll press I to get into insert mode. And then I'll do something like this. So it'll be vim opt number equals. And this command will allow us to have numbers on this left hand side. Take some spaces on the left side so that we can separate and kind of see things a little bit more clearly. Here we can do colon Q or colon WQ for save and quit, exit, get back into that file. And as you can see, now we have numbers on the left-hand side, which is something that's pretty cool. The other thing I like to do is have a relative number. So if we go here, we can actually use relative numbers to figure out where we are on the page versus where we want to go. Let's say this particular page has like a thousand lines and I want to get to line 500. I don't want to have to scroll down all the way to 500. So using relative number would let me know where I am from where I'm going or how far I am from the top to the bottom. Something I like to do here is use relative number. And I'll set that to true. And as you can see, as I move down, my cursor is always on the line that I'm on instead of, you know, just jumping around. And the cool thing about this is, let's say I'm on line 11 and I want to get to line one, which is at the top. I can do one shift G and that'll take me directly to that number. I have the relative numbers and I'm happy with that. I also like to have them opt split below equals true and then vim opt split right equals true save that enter back in well the reason for this is that you can split your terminal so you can do colon vertical Sorry, colon V split, and that will split it to the right. And then you can also do colon split, and that will be the horizontal split. And as you can see up here, split below, this is the split that I made for the top and the bottom. So this split below is what this split is here. And then split to the right is when it does a, do a vertical split, it'll just open up on the right, which means you can open up other files in there as well. So other commands that you can run not really going to go too deep into it because I don't really use this all that often as I use Tmux. And if you guys are interested in Tmux, let me know. I'll add that to this playlist of my NeoVim setup. Now, another cool one that is, it's something that will come in handy, but let's say I have a bunch of text, right? I'm just typing out a bunch of things and the line will continue to go do whatever it's got to do. If I want to navigate through this line, I can't actually do it because there's no wrap. So if I do them, this command here will allow me to do that. So for now, I'm just going to comment this out. Something I want to mention too is these files are Lua files. Lua is just another language and it's really minimal. Since we're used to using different sorts of text editors that may have different sorts of ways of commenting things out, this is how you do it for Lua files, which is the dash dash. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. We're going to come back in. And then, as you can see, this line now will just continue all the way to the end. And to get to the end of the line, it is control. S and then control up arrow to get back to the beginning. But without this line, it makes it a bit tricky to navigate this line. It, it's a lot easier to just do it this way. I'm going to leave that at that. And then we'll move on to the next one. Now to kind of get through this, I'm going to go ahead and just paste in the rest of the ones that I typically use and we'll take a walk through them. 
Uh, what these lines are basically saying is for me, I prefer my tabs. So when I press a tab button, I want it to be four spaces and NeoVim by default will do it eight spaces. So I, I want to set it up so that it has four. You can do it at your own preference, of course. And that's what these two lines are sent. These three lines are essentially doing is setting that for me. So every time we open something up or we edit something and we want to start four spaces in when we press tab, that'll do that. The other thing is that we have Vim Opt Clipboard, and that's really more if you're using a different system altogether. When you copy and paste, it makes it you need to have this so that you can copy and paste correctly into the NeoVim files or whatever files it is in your clipboard. Scroll off is an interesting one because scroll off will. If you see that I'm going up and down, right, I'm going to continue going up and down and it will move. Let's say I add some more lines in here. It's going to move away from the top. And what this Vim Opt scroll off will allow me to do is keep my cursor close to the center. So I never go off screen on that. And that's just something that I have come to appreciate about doing that. Vim Opt Virtual Edit is another thing. If you're in the V visual mode and you do that, it'll highlight everything. But it may not be something that you want to do. Then we'll have this control V, which I can't even show you in here because I'm using WSL. So this command isn't really going to help too much <laughs> in here. Control V in Windows is just going to be to paste. What that does is it allows you to, if you're working in a Linux system, control V will allow you to just highlight the first line or however, everything down from this line. It's kind of like the virtual edit, but Instead, it'll show it as a block instead of each line specifically, you know, collectively like this one does. So that's what that command is. Ink command, I don't remember entirely what that is, but I think it has something to do with sometimes you can go to a document within, if you have a link to something, then when you hit on it to open it up, it'll come up in a split, I think. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> But anyway, the Vim opt ignore case equals true. And that's basically used for search. So when you're doing a search for something, let's say Vim, ignore case will be that I can also look it up as Vim. But that's not going to work because we haven't saved any of these changes yet. So that's what that's for. The term GUI colors is basically to allow us to really make this itself colorful so that we can accept all of the color blocks in it. Because as you can see, everything's in white. But once we save it, you'll see that it will no longer be white without a theme. It'll just allow your terminal to show whatever the true colors are of that terminal. And Vim G map leader G is really just a global command. The map leader will get more into it, but I have set my map leader as space so that when I type in a command for things that I set, when we start to do key bindings, I'll use anywhere where I want to customize. So I want to have something in front of it. Let's say, for example, control P will open up a search. You'll just basically search for a file with control P. You can also set the key bind to do space control P to open it up. It's just another thing that you can use. And it's actually pretty helpful when we're doing all this, because again, as I said, we're going to be using keys for all this stuff. This is not something that you'll typically be using your mouse for. This is something helpful for us. So I'm going to go ahead and save this file. And then we'll go ahead back in. And as you can see, the colors are a little bit different. Slightly, not great, but slightly. As you can see, the cursor is stuck in the center, even though I'm scrolling up, it's pretty much at a point where you can see it. It's not going to go completely off, but if we had more lines, then it would still be visible for us. So I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of these extra lines because we're not going to be needing them. Call that a day. So our options are pretty much done. I'm going to go ahead, open this up and something that we're going to take a look at is for the plugins, the things that we're going to be using to basically build this, we're going to be using lazy. So let's go ahead and take a look at the documentation for lazy. Basically, there are two ways or two package managers that you can use for NeoVim, which one is Packer, and that's the one that's been around probably the longest. I don't know time wise when any of these 
<laughs> started, but lazy.nvm is made by Folky and Folky has a ton of packages, just a lot of them for basically this environment. And so if we scroll down a bit, you can see here that it is a plugin manager. Now, there are other things that you can look at too. There's a lazy vim, I think it's called, maybe lazy nvim, lazy something, I don't know, but it will do all of this stuff for you. And the reason I'm not showing you how to do that is I want you to see what it's actually doing. I want us to just put the things that we're actually going to need and use. And that other one just basically sets up a whole neo vim environment for you. Whereas if you just use the package directly, you can do it on your own. Here you can manage all the plugins, powerful UI, fast startup, a lot of documentation in here, and a lot of it is really good. The documentation for this stuff is really good. So the requirements are NeoVim greater than 0.8, which we have 0.10, so we're good there. We have Git installed. I'm assuming our Git is as updated as it's going to get for now because we just did a fresh install. Now, something you can use also is NerdFont. I have installed NerdFont in my system. Even if you look like right down here, you can see that this is the font that I'm using and it's kind of like a cursive child's handwriting because I am 12. <laughs> and nerd font's pretty cool because it also comes with icons. So just let's just go to it now. Go to nerd fonts. There's a bunch of different fonts that you can choose from and it's pretty, pretty cool. You get little icons and stuff. The one that I'm using in particular, if you're curious to know, is if you go to downloads and go down. Mine is Comic Shans Mono Nerd Font, and that's what it looks like. It gives you little previews, and there are a bunch of other ones where you can look. This Nerd Font is what I like. You can decide and use whatever you want to use, but this is what I use, right? So I've already got that installed. I don't have to do anything else for that. Now, here is how we set up Lazy. Now, I don't really want to get too deep into exactly what all of these things are doing. I'm really just going to give you the broad strokes on it. If you want to see someone who really goes in depth about each of the lines of code in these things, you should check out Vero's NeoVim for beginners because that goes into everything and it makes it a lot clearer for you. But the basic idea is we're saying we're getting lazy vim. And then if we don't have lazy installed, then it pulls the repo and it installs it for us. That's all that this is really broad strokes as to what's happening. So we can go ahead, comment this or copy this. And then in this init Lua. I'm going to go ahead and paste this in. And that's all that we really need. As I said, it's setting it up for lazy.nvim. If we don't have it, then bring it in whenever we run that command to open up init Lua, whenever it initializes, this should always be called. So let's go ahead, exit. We'll go ahead, get back into that init.lua. And since this is the first time we're running it, it's gonna take a minute to kind of process what we have going on here. Now lazy is technically installed. Now back to the lazy documentation, the next step is to add this require lazy setup plugins and ops. So I'm going to go ahead, copy this because this is going to be what actually calls lazy. So we'll come down here, paste that in and let me do that so that we have some space. Say that that equals, and we'll have curly brackets in here. The terminology for these brackets, when you see them, it's called a table. That's what it's called in Lua. And we're making this a local variable. This one will be, well, we'll do this one. Ops. Okay, so nothing's broken. Everything looks like it's still good. We haven't really installed anything other than lazy. Let's go ahead and do our first plugin. Now, the first plugin that I want to install is NeoTree. NeoTree is basically a plugin that will give you a file structure on the left hand side. So if you're used to VS Code or what's the other one, Sublime or PHP Storm or what have you, those text editors typically will have this. Now you can toggle them off and on. You can do all sorts of stuff with them. But for me, it just makes it a lot easier to navigate through a project when you have something like this. This is typically what it's going to look like. There are a bunch of commands and a bunch of things that you can do. I am going to be leaving links 
in the description down below so that you guys can go and read this stuff and take a look and make it yours. Let's see, let's go down a bit. And this is basically how we install a package for NeoVim, which is just grabbing the table, copying it and pasting it. And a lot of times you'll also see examples for Packer as well. And you can just adjust them to lazy because I'm using lazy. So if you find something that's Packer, you can always adjust them to the lazy way of doing things and they should still really essentially work. So that's some really cool flexibility. So I'm going to copy that. We're going to come in here and then I am going to open up these parentheses here. Then I'm going to go ahead and paste in that table. The way that you do this is really simple. You're grabbing the repo, essentially. That's what this looks like here. It's looking for the branch, which is the most updated branch of whenever you're doing this. And then it has some dependencies that it's going to need. Plenary, I'm still not even sure what plenary is, but I know that some of the plugins do require it. It will also need the web dev icon so that when we're looking at the tree that's going to be on the left hand side, we'll be able to have our languages. So for Laravel, we should have a Laravel icon for La for blade files. Or if we're using view, then we'll have a view icon for those files. And that's what this web dev icons is essentially doing. Third image, image support in preview mode. So again, you just want to put it in this first table. And now we can list off any other plugins that we have by adding a comma. When we get ready to add another one, we can just put comma here, open up another table and then just paste in our next plugin. And that's the way that that's set up to work. So let's go ahead, save this. We'll come back. And as you can see, this is what lazy Vim is doing. It is installing the packages that we just said we wanted to have with the dependencies that we just said we wanted to have. And now we should have NeoTree installed. Everything is installed. Everything is updated. If you ever need to come in and update anything, you can do that here with the capital U, which is shift U. Or if you need to clean any files, this is basically where you would do that. So hit the Q and now you can see we've got color which that's a little late in showing up, but here we are. And we have our lazy in here and we have our first plugin. So yeah, we have our plugin, but where is it? Yeah, we installed it, but we didn't actually set anything up to be able to use it. What NeoVim does is not only can you install it, but you need to attach some sort of key binding in order to activate it. So here I'm going to add a comma and we'll do Vim key map set and for normal mode and then our keybind because as i said i've been using vs code for so long i'm used to the control n those two key combinations in order to toggle it or to activate it or not activate it but just toggle on to it so this is going to call a neo tree file system reveal left and then we'll use the carriage return curly brackets and then the parentheses to close that off so now what we should be able to do is use control n and this will allow us to target that tree go ahead open it back up control n now we have a nice little navigation thing so we can go to different parts of it and we can now kind of jump around to all of our files Something I want to do too is this is a little big for me on this side. It's just a bit big. So something that I do like to do is also change that. So under the dependencies, where are you? We can do config equals function. And then we'll end this. In between this here, we'll do require neo tree setup and then the window i just wanted to equal another set of curly brackets with the width of 30 and i found that to be pretty pretty good for my use case close that off close that open it back up and i have an error so this is something pretty cool too it will tell you if something is wrong so i must not have closed something off i'm going to press enter and i'm going to go back down to where we're doing that and see what's up which it's here 
to be able to open that up and it's much, much smaller. Now, something else I like to do is to actually just be able to toggle this tree. I'm going to create another T map and this one, I just, I'm going to replace the T or replace the N with the T and it'll be Neo trim file system or fail left and then toggle. And here we have to write and quit all in order to close both the tree as well as the working directory. Go ahead, open that. And I did something on line 44. Did I? I forgot a comma. It'll be control T. Control T, we'll toggle it on and off. Now, where am I getting all this? In the documentation, if you go down, and even though these are examples for Packer, you can see that these are some things that you can use to call different functions. And go down, you can see different customizations that you can do. So one of them was window width, and that's what I used to make it a little bit smaller. And here are also some suggested toggle some suggested keybinds that you can use to just do a variety of different things within Neo Tree. And you can access these and set these up however you want. It doesn't have to be identical to this, but it could be something that you specifically want to use, whatever is comfortable for you. Some of these, the key commands are a little bit off. The keys will be a little bit far apart from each other or make you do things in really awkward ways. You can always just remap them and change them to what you want. Here's a Neo tree command. And as you can see, there are different commands that you can run. Let's grab this. How those work. So like it is here, if we go to down to the bottom and paste that in, I need to get rid of that first one. If we were to use that command that we just copied, Neo tree file system re reveal right, that'll put it on the right hand side. Super easy. You can also do searches for Neo tree by doing colon can do help neo tree and that will bring up some commands as well so the documentation is also added when you install these packages one thing i want to do is let's exit out of this you can do check health and check health as i said is pretty cool because it will let you know when you're installing packages if something's not right within your system, as you can see, you can make changes and so that everything works correctly. So one of the things here that it's showing me is that I don't have a clipboard tool install whenever we do something with the clipboard, which if you remember with the options, we did do something with the clipboard, then the clipboard tool isn't really going to work correctly. One thing that we can do is type colon help clipboard and see what the suggestions are which is something that we set, but we don't have a working tool for that. So a couple of things we can do, we can install one of these, and I in particular like XClip, so that's something that I can do. Let's quit out of that, quit out of that, quit out of all of that, and we can do sudo apt install XClip. Let's go back into Neovim. Check health. If you tab, it will usually bring up a list of suggestions. And if you tab through it, then you can toggle through them. Check health. And we'll go down and make sure we tackle the next one. Now, rip rep, it's saying that we don't have it available. This will come into play a little bit later. But rip grep is something that we can install as well. So as a matter of fact, let's do that because one of the plugins we need, which is Telescope, haven't gotten there yet. We'll need rip grip. So let's do that. Let's go back into Neovim. And then check out. The rip grip is done. And this is an interesting one, NeoVim, 
we can actually make NPM global with NeoVim. What I want to do is I want to just copy this. And to copy a line is just pressing the Y key. Paste it in, we'll install it globally. Let's head back into Lua or our init Lua, and then we'll do check health again. And then we'll just keep going. So that's done. That's done. Perl, we're not really using Perl, so we don't need to worry about that one. Python, you know, if you're going, going to be using Python, then this is something to take into consideration. But again, this is for Laravel developers, so we're not going to be dealing with that. Ruby, we're not going to be dealing with. And for now, everything should be good on our end. So let's go ahead, exit out of here. You can do as well. And in fact, it's highly encouraged throughout the documentation and anyone who I've seen talk about NeoVim. It's a good idea to separate these files into things because as you can imagine, you know, this is just one plugin that we installed and configured to work with Lazy. And so if we have, let's say, 10 plugins for 10 different reasons, this is going to get quite large. So what I like to do is I like to separate stuff. So I'm going to create a file for this. So I'm going to copy this just so that we don't break anything. And in here, I'm going to create a folder and this folder, it's not going to look good right now. We're going to fix that and make this a little bit more user friendly, but I'm going to create a folder and I'm going to call it Lua. And in that folder, I'm going to have another folder with the name that I want, and that's going to be called designated coder. So we have two folders in here. In this designated coder, I'm going to create another folder and I'm going to call it or. When you create a file, it's the letter A that will open up this little thing here. And then when you create stuff, this will just be some sort of file. But if you put a slash like that, then it will create it as a folder. In here, I'm going to create a file. It's going to be a Lua file and I'm going to call it options.lua. Go ahead into that file, press enter. And so now I'm putting in all of the options that we have into this file. For this to be interpreted by Lua, I'm going to create another file and I'm going to call it init.lua. These two files will be in here, but I need to reference this file, this options.lua, in this init.lua. So here I can just say require designated coder dot core because that's the folder that we're in. And the file itself will be options. So let's close that. And now if we go back to this init.lua, we can get rid of this. We can just require that whole folder. Anything else that we want to put in here? Anything else that we want to put in this core folder, this designated core folder, will be read by Lua. So let's just exit out of here. We'll save and quit everything. And then when we get back in here, we shouldn't have any errors. We should still be able to have all of our options still working the way that they're supposed to. You can see the numbers here. So that's how you know basically our options are working. So now we can also do the same thing for lazy. Let's go ahead. And I'm going to make that a little bit smaller and I'll create another file here called lazy.lua. For us, I'm just going to copy everything else just for right now. We'll clean everything up in a bit. I'm going to go ahead, grab all that. I'm going to put it in this lazy file and leave that the way it is for right now. Just like we did before, we need to let lazy know that or lua. Here, I am going to say in the init Lua, we can copy paste that. This will be lazy because we're in the folder. We're in the designated coder lazy file. We've moved our lazy configuration over and we should still be good. So let's see if we broke anything. And it doesn't look like we did. There's no errors and. We still have our lazy file. Now, something we can also do is instead of using 
CD into .config and VM and then init Lua and VM init Lua, we can actually make a shortcut or an alias. So I'll CD back and then I'll do in our ZSH. Well, you can't see it here. Let me do this here. You see that we have our .zshrc and we can use that to create any alias that we need. So I'm going to open up NVim. In NVim, I want to open up the .zshrc file and go all the way down to the bottom. This is where I will typically make my aliases. And here we can just say alias. And for me, I like to do neoconfig. And that will cd into the .config slash neovim. And it will nvm init lua. So let's save that. And now we can source this file. And now we should be able to do neo config. That'll make things a little bit nicer for us as well. Now, the other thing that we have here is we have our plugins and we don't actually need this option so we can get rid of that. And this plugin, we can move. We can move all of our plugins into their own files and those files we can now call in this lazy Lua file. Typically, I'll create another folder. So I'm going to grab this. I'm just going to copy it in case something breaks horrendously. In the designated coder folder, I'm going to create another folder called plugins. I'm going to create another folder called plugins. So we'll do slash. In this file or in this folder, I'm going to create another file. I'm going to call this file neotree.lua, which means that all of our configuration or neotree we can put in this one file. I'll go ahead, paste it in. Here we want to return. Clean this up. And that's all that that is. Now that we have this file, where do we put it? Well, we put it in lazy, in our lazy.lua. We can actually go ahead and get rid of all of this because we're not going to need it anymore. Here, we can actually get rid of both of these and add a table in here. Something that we can do is now import that designated coder plugins folder. Now, anything in that plugins folder we can put here. I also want to put an empty table in here for right now. We're going to be using it a bit later, but for right now, this is what it's going to be. Hopefully we should be able to save, quit, and come back to this and everything should still work the same. And open stuff up. Our Neo tree is still here. Okay, so we finally installed our first plugin. We have created a really nice folder structure for ourselves. We still have a few more plugins that I want to show you how to set up, show you what they do. We are headed in a good direction. If you're enjoying the content, please go ahead and click that like button as it really does help out the channel. Here's a video YouTube thinks you'll like, and here's a playlist to follow along. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.